Hello everyone. This is online lecture 2 of the course Network Control Systems. Today's title is Model Set Based System Analysis and Synthesis Part 1. First, let's review the model set based analysis in robust control. As you may know, the robust control theory is a control theory which can handle model uncertainty like these block diagrams. Here, G0 represents the nominal plant model which does not have any uncertainty, while this delta represents the uncertainty of the plant model. An additive uncertainty can be written like this figure, while the feedback uncertainty can be written like this figure. In fact, these uncertain models can be understood as the set of models denoted by this script GAD and the script to GFD, in which delta is an element of a set of uncertainty denoted by this bold delta. For these descriptions of plant model sets, a typical robust stabilization problem is formulated as like this. Find the controller K such that the feedback system here is internally stable for any uncertain G which belongs to the model set script G here. The key point here is that we consider the stabilization of all the front models using a fixed controller K, which is to be designed. To make a discussion clear, I here explain the definition of the internal stability, which is defined for the feedback system like this. To define the internal stability, we consider some additional signals denoted by D1, D2, and E1, E2, like this. Please note that these signals are generally virtual signals, which may appear only in the definition of the internal stability. Then, the feedback system is said to be internally stable if all the four transfer matrices denoted by red from D1, D2 to E1, E2 are all stable. For more about the internal stability and the well-posedness of feedback systems, please look at the document in this link. A major approach to the robust stability analysis is to use a small gain theorem. In this slide, I show a standard version of the statement of small gain theorem. Here, suppose that G is stable. Then, the feedback system here is internally stable for any stable and uncertain delta such that its norm is less than or equal to gamma impasse if and only if the norm of G is strictly less than gamma. This simply states that if the loop gain given as the multiplication of the norms of G and the delta is less than 1, then the feedback system is always stable. Please note that H infinity norm of a stable transfer matrix is defined as a peak gain like this. And also, the verposeness of all feedback systems is assumed in this lecture just for simplicity of explanation. To find a detailed proof of the small gain theorem, please look at this link. Next, let's see a model set based interpretation of the small gain theorem for discussion below. A modified version of the statement is given here. Suppose that both G1 and G2 are stable. Here, for a positive constant gamma i, define the model set denoted by script gi as a set of all gi such that its norm is less than gamma i. Then, the feedback system of G1 and G2 here is internally stable for any pair G1, G2 whose norms are bounded like this, if and only if gamma 1 times gamma 2 is strictly less than 1. As we can see here, the small gain theorem can be interpreted as the stability analysis of the feedback of model sets here, script G1 and G2, which are specified by their bounded gains.
In fact, the small gain theorem can also be interpreted in terms of geometric domains, which describe the existing regions of Nyquist curves. For explanation, let's think about SISO systems. Then the H infinity norm of G being less than gamma is equivalent to the fact that the Nyquist curve of G is confined into the disk with radius gamma. An illustration of this is shown here. In this figure, the Nyquist curve of G1 is confined into the disk with radius gamma. This means that its peak gain is less than gamma. In fact, there are infinite many systems whose Nyquist curves are confined into this disk. As we can see here, this disk D1 can describe the model set script G1 here. Clearly, the compatible model set G2, such that the feedback system is stable, is given as the, this blue disk, whose radius is gamma inverse. In this way, the small gain theorem can be interpreted geometrically. Next, let's think about a small gain theorem from a viewpoint of the Nike stability criterion. A simple version of the Nike stability criterion is stated as like this. Suppose that G1 and G2 are both stable. Then, the negative feedback interconnection of G1 and G2 is internally stable if and only if the Nyquist curve of G1 times G2 does not encircle the critical point minus 1. This criterion enables a graphical determination of the stability of feedback systems. For example, in this case, the Nyquist curve of G1 times G2 does not encircle the point minus 1, so that uh, the resultant feedback system is stable in this case. On the other hand, in this case, the resultant feedback system is found to be unstable because the Nyquist curve of G1 times G2 encircles the point minus 1. In fact, the disk domains in the small gain theorem can be explained by the Nyquist stability criterion. Suppose that the Nyquist curves of G1 and D2 confined into these disks D1 and D2. Then, it can be easily seen that the Nyquist curve of G1 times D2 is confined into the disk D12 here, having the radius 1. This means that any Nyquist curve of G1 times D2 cannot encircle the point minus 1. Therefore, the feedback system of G1 and G2 is internally stable. As we can see here, the stability of feedback model sets can be discussed as a multiplication of geometric domains like this and this for Nyquist curves. Please note that there are infinitely many possibilities of Nyquist curves that can be characterized by these geometric domains. Next, let's think about another geometric domain that is useful to discuss the stability of feedback systems. Again, suppose that G is SISO. Then, G is said to be positive real if the real part of gj omega is non-negative for all the frequency variables. This corresponds to the light half plane for its Nyquist curve like this. Please note that this definition of positive realness is a simpler version, so more general definition will be introduced in online lecture 4. Using this expression of model sets, we have the following theorem. Suppose that both G1 and G2 are stable and SISO, and consider the model set of G1 whose real part is non-negative for all omegas, namely it is the right half plane here, denoted by D1. 
Then, the negative feedback system of G1 and G2 is internally stable for any pair G1, G2 in the multiplication of model sets if and only if the model set of G2 here is described also as a right half plane denoted by D2 here. Please note that the domain D1 includes the boundary on the imaginary axis, while D2 does not include the boundary. Therefore, the resultant domain D12 here does not include the negative real axis like this figure. This guarantees the stability of feedback model sets because any Nyquist curves of G1 times G2 cannot encircle the point minus 1. The Nyquist curve of G1 times G2 must avoid, like this, the negative real axis. Extending this idea, we can also consider the case where the model set of G1 is described by the red disk here, denoted by D1, in the light half plane. In this case, the compatible domain of G2 will be obtained as like this blue domain D2, which gives the domain D12 in this figure. Please note that this D12 does not include the half line denoted by L-1 from the point of minus 1. So, any Nike's curves of G1 times D2 cannot encircle the point minus 1 like this figure. In fact, as stated in the theorem here, this D2 is the largest possible domain such that the feedback system of G1 and G2 is internally stable, in which the domain of G1 is given as a red disk here. Finally, I give you the second homework. This corresponds to the proof of the theorem in the previous slide. Let's try to write down a mathematical proof to show that the domain D2 is obtained as like this when D1 is given as like this. Just for reference, I give here a sketch of the proof as a hint. Please try to follow what these equations represent. Okay. Thank you for watching this video.